What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So, Zeke the Snake slithered and spat his anti-Jordan venom once again. I'll put a link to this podcast. Uh, not podcast. I'll put a link to this article in the pinned comment in the comment section below. But he did appear as uh, Zeke the Snake on the All the Smoke podcast. And um, on this podcast, he reiterated that he believes that Scottie Pippen is the greatest defender in NBA history. But I think he was asked his three greatest defenders. And while some people may say that I'm going way, you know, uh, out of bounds by saying this is anti-Jordan rhetoric. Pay attention to what he's saying here. Zeke may have said that his selections weren't ranked, but he has already gone on record with, with belief that Pippen is the best defender in NBA history with Robin coming in second place. So, he said... As a defender, right, he doesn't get enough credit. And when we talk about the greatest and best defender that's ever played in the NBA, Chicago had two of them. But not who you think he's going to say. Rodman and Scottie Pippen. Scottie was different. You know, as a defender at his best, I may have to say that he and Rodman, one of the two best defenders to ever play the game, so I do want to give him his respect and his props. And then, as a facilitator, Scotty, you know, he was the real deal. Then, he's talked about how the third guy would be a chemological one. That's his top three. Pippen, Rodman, and Akeem. And those guys are, in my opinion, top 10 all-time defenders. Um, they have cases. They have cases. But look at the anti-Jordan rhetoric here. You, you talk about the top defenders in Chicago Bulls history, and Michael Jordan doesn't come up in, in at all. Now, we all know that he's a Rodman guy. I mean, Rodman played with him in Detroit. So, Robin's his guy. So, he's going to mention Dennis. But when it comes to Pippen, you know, Jordan haters love to give Crip Pippen more credit than he deserves. Don't get me wrong, man. Pippen was essential for those titles. I'm not saying that. But Jordan haters just have a tendency to overstate his impact. So, they're doing what they always do, and that is to overstate the case for Pippen. Even though without Michael Jordan, Pippen never played in a conference final as a bull, let alone an NBA final or, or won a championship, right? How many championships? Everybody was, talking, everybody was talking about, well, Michael never won without Scotty. But what did Scotty ever do without Michael? And then when you put in the Kim Elijah on, well, what's the thing everybody always say? Well, how would the Rockets have done if they played the Bulls? So then you say, well, Scotty, uh, you know, Michael never played uh, a center like a Kim in the finals. I mean, the best center he ever played against the finals, you could argue, is maybe, maybe Kevin Duckworth. Or from a skill standpoint, maybe Divock. They're not in the same league as Elijah Wong. So to me, I just see a lot of anti-Jordan bias once again when it comes to Zeke the Snake. I do know one guy who's not up there for all-time great defense, and that's Isaiah Thomas. 
you know, the same guy that for the last ooh, seven years of his career was never again a top ten def- uh, a top ten MVP candidate after eighty six, eighty seven. You know, um, a guy who was never considered one of the great defenders in the NBA. His backcourt teammate was, and Joe Dumars. Rodman was. Lambert was a thug, but he was he was good on defense when he wasn't fouling and trying to hurt people and maul them. Sally was a great defender. Matter of fact, I think everybody on the team, save for Adrian Dantley, when he was there, were better defenders than Isaiah Thomas. But anyway, I want to make a point about something. I said I was going to do a video about this, but... And when I was talking about how Scotty, you know, was the one that helped Mike win, and Mike wasn't doing anything until Scotty arrived. But let's let's do something here. Isaiah Thomas got in the NBA, what, 81? Right? Now, when did they finally play in a conference final? 87. 87, right? So that's six years. That's six years, right? You get in the league in 81. You get in your first conference finals in 87. So that's six years. Jordan came in the league in 84. His first conference finals was what? 89? So that's five years. Five years. Now everyone's saying Jordan didn't do anything until Pippen got there, but always conveniently forget Horace Grant, who sometimes was even more impactful than Scotty in some playoff series. But everyone mysteriously forgets about Horace Grant. Now that's what, uh, let, let's say, 87. Eighty-seven, but they don't get to an NBA Finals until ninety-one. That's four years. Now, those first few years when it was the Isaiah Thomas show, although they did have Kelly Tripuka and Grant Long, I get that. But they were a middling team, as I've always said. What really changed it for the Pistons? I'll tell you. The drafting of Joe Dumars, which was 85. The drafting of Dennis Rodman and John Sally. The acquisition of uh, Rick Mahorn. And the trade of Adrian Dantley from Utah. All these things happened in 85 and 86. And what happens in 87? They're in the fucking conference finals. But nobody likes to bring that up. Everybody was talking about Jordan ain't, get a, ain't do nothing until Pippen started winning. But what the fuck was Isaiah Thomas doing until he got all of that help? But everybody was talking about, oh, he ain't had no help. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. It's not my fault that these stupid idiots don't have Adrian Dentley as a top 75 player, nor Joe Dumars, who arguably was the best perimeter defender in the NBA in the late 80s. Adrian Dantley, a two-time scoring champion, one of the most efficient players the game has ever seen. Some metrics have him number one in efficiency. It's not my fault these Nimrods don't have those guys ranked higher. Let's look at Kelly Tripuka for a second. That name probably don't even ring a bell with current fans. Who the hell is that dude? He's like a bum. Oh, a plumber. Well, that plumber averaged 17 points a game. 36% from downtown. That's pretty damn good for a guy to play in the 80s, right? That plumber, the first five years of his career, Average 21.6 points, 48% shooting from the floor, 
33% from downtown in an era where three-point percentage was usually around 26%, and 83% from the foul line. And then, from 84 to 91, Kelly Trapuca shot 37.8% from three-point range in the 80s. He became more of a uh, contributing player later on in his career. Let's look at Grant Long. Not Grant Long. That's the wrong guy. I'm thinking about uh, not no 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 not Grant Long. John Long. John Long. I had them mixed up. John Long is the guy he played with earlier in his career. John Long played a long time, eighteen seasons. John Long in 80 average 19, 81, 18, 82, 22. This is a guy that can score, man. Then his role changed uh, later on. I think he started coming off the bench. But he got back as a starter in 84, averaging 16. And then eventually he was traded. And when was he traded? 86, 87. So this guy had, Isaiah had a guy, and Kelly Trapuca was putting up 20-some points a game. John Long averaging between 18 and 22 points a game. And you got Isaiah Thomas. Jordan didn't have that. Not when Pippen and, and, and Oakley and Grant was there. So what took Isaiah so long? You tell me. That's all I got to say in this one, man. Tell me what you guys think.